is John Trout, Cider Blossom Orchard. It's uh, another cloudy day. It's a, not a cold day today. It's probably 45 to 50 degrees. But I wanted to, before I get all the trees pruned this year, I wanted to show you the differences in the growth styles in some of the trees. You may hear you've got uh, drooping trees, trees that grow vigorously, trees that don't. And I wanted to show you examples of those and, and how those trees actually look. So let's take a, take a look at some of the trees here in the orchard. First, this one right behind me, this is a gold rush on Molly Merton 111. This tree is about uh, eight, nine years old. It's been in the ground here. So let's take a look at some of the characteristics, not just of the rootstock, but of gold rush. So here is the tree and uh, pardon the bird noise. They've moved in over across the way there, but this is the tree. Again, this is a Molly Merton 111. The tree is probably 12 feet tall and it's being controlled at that height. But one of the things you'll find, this tree's not been pruned yet this year, but one of the things you'll find with Gold Rush is that the growth style of Gold Rush is very easy to manage. Whereas on a lot of trees, you get a whole lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, these long, whippy shoots that like to grow. Gold Rush is not a real vigorous grower. And when you stand back and you look at this tree, you see a lot of fruiting wood. All of these buds here, those are flowers. They're gonna, they're gonna open up here in just a couple of months. Hopefully it's no sooner than that. And you don't see all of the vegetative growth like you do in other trees. So for instance, this is vegetative growth. It could be a flower bud right there on the end, but by and large, that branch is vegetative out there the last foot or so. You don't see a whole lot of that on Gold Rush. Gold Rush really stays tight. It's an easy tree to manage, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's just one of the oddball shoots, and uh, that probably came after I did a pretty hard pruning cut last winter. But Gold Rush, as a whole, uh, it likes to stay in its bounds, uh, an easy tree to prune. I'm very happy with it. I've got several of them here. This is the oldest. Here's another one right here. And it's got just a couple strong shoots on it, but those were hard cuts made last pruning season. But by and large, this tree looks like it's set up to make a lot of fruit. All right, now I'm going to give you an example of a tree that really doesn't know how to behave itself. Let's go have a look. This tree, I would say, is it was sold as a semi-dwarf. This is one of your box door trees that I purchased uh, maybe 10 years ago. It was a stamen wine sap sold in a five-gallon pot. And so it is a semi-dwarf. So that could mean a number of things uh, from Molling Merton 111 to M7. Um, but to me, this is looking more like a Molling Merton 111 type tree with the vigor that's in this tree. And planting location has a few things to say about how a tree wants to grow as well. So it may not all be rootstock characteristics, but this stamen wine sap is hard to keep into bounds. And you can see just how the branches grow long and uh, just thick, thick growth in here on just two year old wood. And every year it's a challenge to prune this tree. The tree right now is probably approaching uh, 15 feet. And that's after some pruning up in the top. But this is just a big, big tree. Uh, wine sap uh, may just be that vigorous grower, but the rootstock here is coming into play. And you hear a lot of things about rootstocks and growing conditions and how that all comes into play. And for a backyard orchardist, uh, you probably don't want to take all that into consideration. Just count on a semi-dwarf tree. You know, being up there at that 12 plus foot height and wanting to sprawl out just a little bit. We do see a lot of fruiting wood on this stamen wine sap. 
the tree's never produced a whole lot of fruit, which is probably why it grows as vigorously as it does. The apple crops never really slowed it down any. Um, it, I didn't, I wouldn't even say it had a decent crop last year. It, it, uh, it had a crop. And so when the tree's not putting all of that energy into growing fruit, it puts energy into growing tree. And that's what you see here. So this tree will get a hard pruning uh, in the, the week or two to come here. And we'll make it look a little bit different and then we'll probably fight this again next year. But this is a stamen wine sap again. This is just, look at the difference between this tree and the one I just showed you. Both approximately the same age, stamen wine sap and gold rush. Big difference. Probably site conditions a little bit. Probably a little difference in rootstock. And vigor in the actual cultivar, the, the wine sap versus the gold rush. I've got another one to show you. Let's go have a look. Okay, I'm over on the other hillside now. I've got a little bit of weather coming in. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna make this short. This is a royal limber twig, twig tree. Royal limber twig. And you can see how it gets the twiggy name. This tree's about, oh, I ran over here if you can't tell. This tree's about, um, again, about eight years old. And it's been pruned just the same as the stamen wine sap and the gold rush. And you can see how this tree takes on a very twiggy appearance. Doesn't get the real strong branches. Lots of smaller twiggy type branches. The trees have thus far not set strong crops yet. We have set some crops in them. This year it looks like we're probably going to get our best crop yet. It doesn't seem to respond too vigorously to pruning cuts because you don't see a whole lot of vigor in the tree. The deer do manage to take care of the lower portions of the tree just because I don't have this area of the orchard fenced in. And here's another royal limber twig. Follow that out there. And uh, you know, it's just not a real heavy, strong grower, but that's a difference um, between your different cultivars, same rootstock, Molly Merton 111, different cultivars. And I know the rootstocks pretty much when you buy from a reputable nursery and they tell your trees on MM111, you can pretty much count on that. Versus if you're at the box store and it says semi-dwarf, you don't know what that means. But it could be an M7, uh, probably an M7 or a Molly Merton 111. Uh, that's tree here. Um, it, and just so, you know, an M7 is probably 60% of a full-size tree. And Molly Merton 111 is about 80%. And then you throw in different site conditions and you get a lot of different kinds of vigor in your different trees, but this tree here is, it's probably, oh, 13, 14 feet up there, and probably won't back that down any this year. I'm gonna let it go one more year before I bring it down just a little. And here's the last royal limber twig in the row. This one seems to have a little more vigor. It's a little bigger tree in general than the others, but the twiggy nature, that is the limber twig. So let's look at a picture of the last three trees and we'll just uh, do a little comparison here. I think it's interesting. Here are the three trees that we just looked at as the rain continues to fall. With the first being the gold rush on Molling Martin 111. A couple of factors here with this tree, gold rush, would be classified as moderate vigor. I would say it could be even less than that. And where this tree is planted is where we had a lot of activity with house construction and things like that, and the soil is compacted. That could definitely come into play. This next tree is a stamen wine sap. And this is on an unknown rootstock. We only know it's semi-dwarf. I would say it's it's got to be Molly Merton 111, just looking at the vigor of the tree. That's what it looks like to me. This tree is planted in a different location altogether than the Gold Rush. And this, of course, never saw any heavy trucks on construction and things of that nature. It sits lower on the, on the hill, so it gets more moisture. 
in the summertime, which could factor in, and then just the vigor of the cultivar wine sap being different from Gold Rush. But definitely a more vigorous tree, gonna take up a lot more space and be a little more difficult to control. And then lastly, we have the Royal Limber Twig, which is also planted on Malling Merton 111. And you can see the twiggy nature of this tree, how it likes to grow in a different habit and form than the stamen wine sap and also the gold rush. Uh, just different uh, cultivars like to do different things. And this is, I thought was a pretty good example of what you might expect with Royal Limber Twig, with stamen wine sap and with a gold rush. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.